can turn this into something positive and maybe it'll spread. He's the most positive person on his job. Now you're cute. I feel good. Good morning and welcome to Positively Milwaukee. I'm Carol Meekins. This is a time when more and more people are living past 100 years old. And I got the chance to meet Ruth Bradley McNeely Wells. She is now 102 years young. And she gave me her wisdom on living a long life. Happy birthday to you. Cha, cha, cha. Festive balloons and exquisite cake, loads of love and laughter invade the Milwaukee home of Tracy Louise. <laughs> it's your birthday. Hope it sparkles in a wonderful way. Tracy hosted a grand birthday celebration on May 16th to honor her mom, Ruth Bradley McNeely Wells. I got a lot of cards from the people in the drive-thru. They put them in a box and brought them to the door. Hard to believe, but Miss Wells is now 102 years old, definitely not looking like a woman of a certain age. They never really knew my age. And whatever I told them, they didn't believe it. Miss Wells tells me she does not ever recall being sick as a child. I don't ever remember mother having me to a doctor. I never was sicky. Born in 1919 and growing up on a farm, Ruth tells me she was left in charge of cooking meals at the age of 10. This while her brothers did chores outside. I was real sassy coming up. Everybody that came and wanted to know something, Instead of asking my mother, I said, you have to ask me. And mother would allow me to do it. <laughs> I had a good life. I wasn't, I wasn't lazy. And I could do a lot of cooking for my mother. Ruth is popular for her culinary skills. She taught cooking classes in Flint, Michigan, even had her own dessert business. But her top priority in life? Her children were well, always number one in her life, no matter what. She had unconditional love. And I asked Ruth about any wisdom she can impart after living more than a century. The only thing I could tell them, you have to behave and not do ugly things. I was the type of a girl, I didn't believe in doing anything ugly. A lesson from mom her daughter took to heart. She taught me how to stand up for yourself, don't back down to do the right thing. She's always done the right thing. Tracy Louise, a retired teacher, admits mom usually knew best. Every time I've erred away from her, it didn't turn out well. So that was the biggest lesson that she taught me, uh, was always to do the right thing to your fellow human being like you would want them to treat you. She always said that I was too outspoken. I said, well, where do you think I learned it from? Ruth was known for her volunteer work and commitment to church and civil rights. Tracy remembers going to marches with her mom in the 60s. And I think because she did do the right thing, the Lord has blessed her with a long and happy life. And does Miss Wells have any advice for those hoping to live to 102? None, I just live. <laughs> That's what I call no-nonsense advice. And when Miss Wells' daughter, Tracy Louise McNeely, got married, Ruth did the cooking for about 500 people. She even wrote a cookbook. Way to go. Well, a sweet treat has a way of turning a bad day around. And a Racine woman is baking cupcakes, sure to make you smile. And as Julia Fellow tells us, you might be surprised at how she learned that skill. Roshan Elias does not cut corners when she makes her cupcakes. All of her ingredients are high quality and fresh, and she never forgets the most important thing. A lot of love, yes. <laughs> yeah. Her love for baking started at an early age, growing up in Malawi, Southeast Africa. But the cookbook that got her started had come from America. It was a book my aunt had. I still remember, it was orange. <laughs> I just, out of curiosity, curiosity, picked it up, you know started looking, but because I like baking, I went straight to the baking section. Roshan's family encouraged her to learn and grow her baking skills. She mostly sold her cupcakes at farmer's markets. I had a lot of customers, you know, 
asking me when are you opening and I always said nope I'm not opening I didn't want to have a stove. But when she started to get huge orders for hundreds of cupcakes at a time she reconsidered. Her customers have made it all worthwhile. You kind of develop this they become family. Despite opening the winter before the pandemic started Roshan says those customers their love for her and these cupcakes help keep her going. You have to build a relationship with your customers because those are the people that support you on a daily basis. At the end of the day, much of this success of sugar and spice comes down to Roshan's commitment to her craft. Don't give up. You know, if you believe in what you're doing, keep going and someday, you know, it will happen. Just keep trying, keep trying to make it better. Excellent advice. Roshan says with pandemic restrictions lifting, she has been able to see more customers and says making them happy is one of the best parts of her job. It's a noble sound of honor. The Great Highland Bagpipes have been around for hundreds of years. A local Milwaukee band is performing tunes to pay respects to heroes. It's a unique sound known all around the world. It takes quite a bit of time to practice and stay good at it. Kevin Lynch is the president of the Greater Milwaukee Fire and Police Pipes and Drums. He and the band use this skill for an important purpose. The Great Highland Bagpipe has been a traditional instrument um, for honoring law enforcement, uh, firefighters, and the military. Often, that includes parades and festivals. But we stay busy most of the year. In Washington, D.C., Pipers play at midnight during National Police Week at the National Law Enforcement Memorial. Last year, of course, the pandemic stopped everything. So Gary Byers and the rest of his bandmates decided to do something to keep the tradition alive right here in the Milwaukee area. Last year, uh, we sent Pipers, some that didn't even belong to the band, but wanted to honor the fallen because we always said we would never forget them. The band played at 17 police departments across the area over the course of a week. Lynch and Byers, both former officers themselves, say that commitment comes from a deep-seated respect for law enforcement. We will put off any other engagements that we have to make sure that we're available to honor the fallen so that they know the sacrifices that the police officers have made and, and that they are honored and will never be forgotten. And that was Tom Durian reporting. Kevin and Gary say many of the band's pipers have very humble beginnings. They got lessons in the basement of a local bar for just $5 and a pint of Guinness. If you'd like to learn more, we have a link for you on our Positively Milwaukee Facebook group. The band will help you find a tutor if you'd like to learn. After the break, a loving tribute to a Special Olympics volunteer, plus a young woman proving to her classmates it is a small world after all. I've definitely learned um, how to respect individuals from different backgrounds. Good morning and welcome back to Positively Milwaukee. You're about to meet a young woman from Waukesha County. The 18 year old is working hard to improve her community and expand cultural awareness. She won the coveted Girl Scout Gold Award after she came up with an amazing way to help students learn about a country on the other side of the world. This Pewaukee High School senior just said, be kind to everyone in Farsi. Netta Besharat has been fluent in Farsi all her life. Born in this country, her parents are from Iran. I travel to Iran um, a lot to see my family. Besharat is one of 15 young ladies earning the coveted Girl Scout Gold Award from the Girl Scouts of Wisconsin Southeast. Her winning project links students in the U.S. with students in Iran. It's called Project Speak. Teachers in both countries supervise conversations between students. Well, how do you guys spend your weekend? Oh. And with Project Speak, um, I've brought Iranians and Americans together more than 7,000 miles apart. So that's my ultimate, ultimate goal in life, to just bridge that gap between people from different backgrounds. 
It was a great sense of accomplishment, I think. I mean, I'd been working on my website, on my project, on Project Speak, for more than two years. Through Project Speak, Besharat hopes to dispel myths many people have about Iran. I haven't experienced any overt racism, but definitely some prejudice, yes. Um, I mean, whenever, whenever I bring up that I'm Iranian in a conversation. The conversation almost just stops right there. Netta says Project Speak and being a Girl Scout has enriched her life. One thing I love about Girl Scouts is just all the adventures I've, I've gone on. We've had so many different experiences, camping, hiking, scuba diving, kayaking, jewelry making. I could go on and on. Besharat is a clear super achiever. She's even opened doors in our high school. She found a way students who love science can meet and compete. I started the Science Olympiad Club at Pewaukee High School just in hopes of creating an opportunity for students and for myself actually to just be a part of a fun supporting community of students who, who love science and who um, hopefully want to pursue science in their futures. I know a lot of, a lot of girls my age may feel um, kind of uncomfortable like being interested in science or um, doing anything involving STEM, but I really think it's important to just go for it and get involved and um, we, we're fully capable as well as women. Netta is also an athlete. She's coached gymnastics and by the way, don't mess with her. I enjoy practicing Taekwondo. I'm a first degree black belt. This teenager has even found a way to help the community. Netta, you still find time to volunteer. Yes, I do. At the food pantry of Waukesha County and just tutoring at my school as well as volunteering in a fourth grade classroom. Netta is grateful for loving parents. They've been with me every step of the way. I'm having my back um, and and they're just really proud of me which and supportive, which I'm thankful for. But there is something this enthusiastic teen does to irk mom and dad. My parents are kind of annoyed because I never really get to spend much time at home with them. Her young age does not prevent her from understanding her mission in life. My purpose in life is to just bring people together and to just help others. It looks like the future of Netta Besharat is as golden as the Girl Scout award she just earned. It really makes me feel thankful for everything that I have and all the opportunities that, that I'm provided with. And we are so happy to say that Netta is keeping her skills close to home because she's been accepted into the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Well, you might remember Ken Kimmerline. He was our Positively Milwaukee Legacy Award. He was also a beloved Special Olympics coach. And when he passed away of COVID, his loved ones wanted to make sure Ken's kindness lived on. Jenny Hone knew Ken Kimmerline his whole life, including the decade he volunteered with Special Olympics. He was so passionate about it. And I'm like, well, I want to do that then. Ken spent his time spreading his passion and kindness with the athletes. That included being a partner for golf athlete Ryan Canodal. The pair worked so well together, they took home a bronze medal from the World Games in Abu Dhabi in 2019. Medals aside, Ryan gained a lot of confidence in himself. It's not about winning. It's about being a part of the team. And... I think that is what really drew Ken to Special Olympics. Last year, Jenny and Ken found themselves coaching opponents in basketball. And it's the last time I saw him and received a hug from. And if you know, if you knew Ken, you knew what a, a hug from Big Ken was like. It was pretty special. When Ken died due to COVID complications last year, he left a gaping hole in the community. Jenny established a scholarship fund to try to fill it. It just was this perfect way to continue Ken's journey and, and everything that he was. The $5,000 scholarship is for Cedarburg students who volunteer with Special Olympics. And the first goes to Sadie LaHaye, who's been a volunteer for three years. I just want to make other people happy. And that's the biggest thing. And so being able to support the athletes and help out the athletes like every week, just made me really happy. She is honored to benefit from Ken's legacy. His dedication to Special Olympics is so cool. And Special Olympics is such a great program. And it's cool seeing people that are like so dedicated to it. Sadie will be taking her scholarship to Milwaukee School of Engineering, 
where she plans to study architectural engineering. She wants to create more inclusive, accessible spaces. I want to spend my future doing that, those sorts of things, because that's how I feel like I can help people the most. Jenny doesn't have a hand in picking who wins Ken's scholarship, but she couldn't be happier with the choice. I don't know the other candidates, but uh, after meeting Sadie, I'm like, wow, fabulous, fabulous selection. And there is even more positive news in the story. There's a surprise for Sadie. Mel's Charities of Ozaukee County has decided to chip in a little more money for Ken's scholarship. Now, we can't tell you how much it, that is because it's going to be a surprise for Sadie. She will find out at a ceremony later this summer. So congratulations, Sadie, and Ken's memory is being honored well. Stay with us after the break how you can help hungry kids this summer. But first, we've got to meet our positively Milwaukee pet of the week. <laughs> Morning, I'm Johanna Shemansky with Haws, the Humane Animal Welfare Society of Waukesha County. This is Mojo and he is say about 40 pounds right now but that's gonna change probably because he is only 10 months old. He is a sweet sweet boy. He is um, okay with other dogs as far as we know. Seems like he would probably be a little bit scared of cats if you had a cat, we definitely have to give that a test with one of our dog savvy cats here at the shelter. Um, but we think he would also do well in a family with kids of all ages. He's very gentle and pretty calm overall. He is um, a playful guy, but he is also pretty mellow. Can you sit? Too many. Sit. We'll, we'll give him a gimme on that one. But. If you are interested in adopting Mojo or any other pets at Haws, please call us at 262-542-8851 or visit our website at hawespets.org. We have lots of amazing animals that are in need of forever loving homes that are positively Milwaukee. Welcome back to Positively Milwaukee. The Stop Summer Hunger campaign is underway. Summer is one of the hungriest times of the year for children who might not have access to free and reduced meal programs provided by schools. And the pandemic only made this problem worse. Our Lance Allen talked to leaders with the Hunger Task Force about how they're making sure kids are fed. It takes a lot to get Randall, Hezekiah, and Kingston off of this splash pad. But before these brothers started play, they made sure to have a little breakfast. Sausage, an egg, and a piece of bread. That breakfast sandwich came with a piece of fruit and cold milk. So it's perfect. The boy's mom, Key Strong, says she heard about this meal giveaway on a neighborhood flyer. She says it's a breath of fresh air. You know, it's a day off for me. It gives us something to do for the day, and then they're having fun. Sherry Tussler, the director for Hunger Task Force, says she just wants to give kids the resources they need to be kids. And what it does is it perks them up. Everybody knows what it feels like to be a little hungry in the morning, and you know, most of us can, oh, well, I'll have a quick snack. But a lot of kids may not have that option in the summer. That's where Hunger Task Force steps in with its summer meals program. They're in the parks, they're at the Ys, they're at the Boys and Girls Clubs, we're in the schools, we're making sure even on street corners that children are being fed. And if mom or dad come with, they can also eat for free. But Tussler says Hunger Task Force can't do it alone. You can make a big difference by giving a small donation. Clearly, if you're that guy who can make a big donation, we'll take it as well. But be that guy who makes a donation. And that donation pays for more than just food. It pays for a feeling of security and maybe a little joy. It uplifts the community. So pretty much being able to bring the kids out and not have to worry about anything, like everybody's literally running around and enjoying themselves. I don't want to go back in, in the pool. Oh, that's like most kids. Now, $25 actually supports a week's worth of dinners for kids at mill sites. If you'd like to give, you can visit the website that you see on your screen. We do have a link for you at tmj4.com. Well, this summer, people are catching up on weddings. The pandemic postponed, and a very special wedding in our area gives us a reason to smile. A Greenfield High School teacher got the honor of a lifetime. Karen Pobielski taught her student, Heather, about 15 years ago. Well, recently, Heather became engaged, and he, she asked her teacher, Karen, to be the officiant. Now, how cute is that? Beautiful picture. Congratulations to Heather and her new husband. A former New Berlin mayor is being remembered in a great way. The former Green Loop Trail 
The longest in Malone Park has been renamed the Mayor Timothy K. Tully Trail. Tully was the recreation director for New Berlin for nine years before he ran for mayor. We talked to his wife, Pat, about the new name. He would just say, I am so touched. I can't wait to get and work the crowd, come and see all of you. And, um, you know, he always made a point that everybody was very important and he would go around and see everyone today. Mayor Tully passed away in December of 2020 at 70 years old. He served two terms between 1985 and 1993 and was New Berlin's youngest mayor. And we have another reason to smile, a person doing good work in the world, Greg, Greg Ryan. He's known as the snowblower guy. He lives in Milwaukee's River West neighborhood and he gives away lawnmowers and snowblowers to people who cannot afford them. People actually donate them and Ryan fixes them up and gives them back to the community. A perfect way to keep the neighborhood positively Milwaukee. And now this is a familiar extreme sport. Teens are trying out to be male boat jumpers on Geneva Lake. They have to jump off the boat, run down the, run down the dock, and get back on the boat before it actually cruises away. Whoa, by the way, that vessel never stops moving. We show you these pictures every year, and you, you know, we just never tire of sharing these pictures. What an incredible job. I'm gonna be back with my weekly message of wisdom. Don't go away. Welcome back to Positively Milwaukee. The world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who watch them without doing anything. Today's quote of the week comes from Albert Einstein. Now, you may know Einstein for his work in science, but did you know he also helped save thousands of Jewish people facing persecution in Germany before World War II? Einstein and many others knew that standing by and doing nothing was not an option. And remember, we can all do something about the wrongs we see in the world. And I hope you remember that message. And as always, stay positively Milwaukee. Thank you.